This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday, August 20th. I'm James Spann. Summer heat cranks up. That'll be our big headline for the next five to seven days, and the tropics are getting active to some degree. Let's talk about it. Check the big picture this morning. This is the water vapor satellite image. You can see how a heat ridge beginning to build a little west of the state, and that will expand and strengthen and move in here, setting up upper 90s later this weekend over the weekend. Finally, some summer heat. Have heat advisories in effect today for the Mid-South, uh, basically Memphis up to St. Louis, and we'll probably see those expanding in coming days. Severe weather possibilities way up north today on top of the heat ridge. And the biggest rain across the country, again, on top of the heat bubble. Here in our state, there's the chance of a storm every day, but they will be very isolated. And uh, this is suggesting basically nothing for West Alabama through early Monday morning of next week with maybe a little bit for the eastern half of the state. But uh, widespread rain, certainly not expected. But again, we stress there will be storms out there every day, just very widely spaced. All right, people buzzing about the tropics. Let's here take a look. We have uh, two waves in the tropical Atlantic, and the lead wave is the one that we're watching, and it's very disorganized. I mean, goodness, you know, there's, there's just nothing there yet. Uh, there's no well-organized center. And understand, this thing might not get its act together, but the NHC guys are giving it a 30% chance of development in the short term, a 50% chance in the longer term. Here's a look at the tropical model spread on this. And the general idea is that the wave comes across the uh, islands in about 48 hours and then comes up toward uh, maybe the southern coast of Hispaniola and Cuba. And uh, a lot of questions here. Can it get its act together with the dry air around it? Will the island of Hispaniola tear this thing apart? We just don't know that yet. And uh, again, some of the longer term models do different things with it. And I'll show you all of them here in just a little bit. You know, some bring it up in the Gulf, some curve it up into the Atlantic. And you, you get all these scam guys on social media, you know, scaring people to death. And, and let me just stress, nobody, no human knows the ultimate destination of this thing right now, you know, seven to 10 days in advance. So there's no point in worrying about it. It was something you have to watch. Here's a look at the intensity models. And uh, you've got one camp that just keeps it uh, disorganized, doesn't do anything with it. A few models do try and bring it up, just only two to a Category 1 hurricane, and even those drop off the strength dramatically at 120 hours, and more than likely that's because of the interaction with Hispaniola. And you see really none of them ramp it up into anything big. Uh, so there's a chance nothing happens at all here. But one thing I will say, the water in the Gulf is very warm. Uh, 30 degrees Celsius down there, and it's basically been untouched. No activity so far this season, no upwelling of cooler waters. So there is a lot of latent heat energy there if something can get up in there. And again, I'll show you what the global models do here in just a little bit. This is uh, the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid at 1 o'clock this afternoon. This is at 500 millibars, and this is the OZ run. Pretty impressive shortwave feeding that monsoon moisture up into the southwest United States. They saw some nasty flooding near Phoenix yesterday. But around here, you can see the heights are beginning to come up. And uh, we'll expect mid-90s today. This is the high-resolution HRRR model. And it's done a pretty decent job uh, in recent days, and really over the summer with convection. This is suggesting there might be some showers developing at mid-morning. This is like 10 o'clock this morning local time suggesting maybe a band of showers along Interstate 20. Now, there's nothing on the radar as of 5 or 6 o'clock here, but uh, we'll keep an eye on things. And then at 6 o'clock this evening, just very widely spaced convection. Otherwise, partly sunny, hot, hazy, mid-90s. Tomorrow, here comes the 594 ring. That's where the heights at 500 millibars are 5,940 meters. And if you see that in the summer, it's hot. And uh, the warm air aloft tends to squelch any showers. Could a storm form tomorrow? Yes, but they'll be very widely spaced. And again, we'll do mid to upper 90s. Same thing on Friday. And for many, you know, football teams, first night of the football season, high school football. And uh, highs 96 to 99. Ouch. 
All right, weekend fans, no real change on Saturday. Uh, could, this, could a storm pop up? Yes, but most places don't get rain. Highs in the upper 90s and the same thing on Sunday. Both the, the uh, GFS, they have us at 98 on both days. And it, it's been skewing a little too warm this summer. We might do 96 or 97, but I don't know if you can feel the difference. All right, let's look at next week. This is Monday. Uh, the heights are at 591. Got a nice trough over the western United States, by the way. And ultimately, that's going to beat that heat down. But uh, Monday will stay uh, hot. And again, uh, looks like maybe a little increase in moisture. The air a little colder aloft. So maybe a few more afternoon storms. And then this is Tuesday. Still looking relatively dry. Storms pretty isolated. Highs maybe low 90s as the uh, heights come down. And we note to the south... The tropical system that looks uh, not particularly impressive, but it's there coming up toward the Yucatan Channel. And then this is Wednesday. Uh, that thing is kind of sitting on the northern tip of the Yucatan. And up here, we're still relatively dry. And again, low 90s would be likely on Wednesday. So what do the models do with this? Uh, this is the GFS now on Sunday, August 31st. This is the uh, Labor Day weekend. And it's got a very significant tropical system just north of Galveston. And uh, again, this is nothing but voodoo and wild speculation. And we, look, long time, we've been making these videos for what? Way over 10 years. And long time viewers know, you know, this is out in the land of voodoo and we're just looking for trends out here. There's no way you can forecast that. In fact, let me show you how different the, the global models look. This is the Canadian it's got it in the Atlantic, all right? So you got the GFS north of Galveston. The, the Canadian, you know, wants to do the recurve thing, and it's got it off in the Atlantic. And by the way, this is valid uh, uh, Friday evening, August 29th, all right? Hey, what's the difference of, what, 1,500 miles? What about the European? Well, it's got a weak system coming up over the southeast Louisiana marshes down there. Uh, only a thousand one millibars. It just doesn't do much with it at all. Uh, so you know, you know, come on. Uh, this is something clearly we'll need to watch. But all of this wild, you know, speculation, these bogus things you see people are sharing on Facebook. Just the time for that is not now. Nobody knows, and I mean nobody. We'll check the end of the forecast. This is uh, September fourth. Heights about where they should be, and that's suggesting uh, pretty typical early September weather. Still pretty warm and humid with a chance of scattered storms. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes in the blog. Next video here by 4 o'clock today. If you can, catch us this evening on the live stream of the television side, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless.